the final set, I think. Yep. For the final bit of this full set review, we are going to go into the double face cards. This is Innistrad Midnight Hunt. Innistrad is notorious for transforming cards. Um, lots of cards that have day and night sides. Um, so there's a lot of double face cards. So be patient as we go through all of these double face cards. The first one, obviously this is gonna be in Wooburg order. Um, so we're going back up to white. The first white dual face card is Ambitious Farmhand for one and a white. You get a 1-1 one, one Human Peasant. Um, when Ambitious Farmhand enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic planes, reveal it, and put it into your hand, then shuffle. It also has a Coven ability. For one a white white, transform Ambitious Farmhand. Activate only if you control three or more creatures with different powers. So, um, you will see cards that have day bound and night bound. Oh, you don't, can't see my mouse. Day bound and night bound on them. Um, so his other side will have night bound. And this, these are the cards that transform depending on the day night cycle. Cards like Ambitious Farmhand, however, only transform when you activate their transform abilities. So you have to have a coven, which means three or more creatures with different power. And then you pay one, a white, and a white to transform Ambitious Farmhand. And its transform side is Seasoned Cathar. So it's a 3-3 three, three human knight with lifelink. Um, so it goes from an Ambitious Farmhand to a Seasoned Cathar because she was ambitious and joined the preachers, clerics, knights and became a 3-3 three, three lifelinker. Uh, pretty interesting dual card there. This next one is another new-ish new mechanic. <clears throat> so it's one side is, it's day side, is Beloved Beggar. So for one and a white, you get a 0-4 human peasant. So nice blocker. Um, <clears throat> And so this one, you don't have control over when you can transform it. But what happens is when Human Beggar dies, it goes into your graveyard. And then you pay its Disturb cost. So you pay four and two white to cast this from, its, from your graveyard. And when you cast it from your graveyard, then it transforms into the Generous Soul. Uh, it's a 4-4 four, four spirit creature with flying and vigilance. If Generous Soul would be put into your graveyard from anywhere, exile it instead. So you've got, you play your beggar. Um, it acts as a wall for you. When it dies, it turns into a spirit and you can cast it again. And uh, once that spirit dies, it does not come back. It gets exiled. Um, the next white dual-faced dual card is Bereaved Survivor. For two and a white, you get a 2-1 human peasant creature. When another creature you control dies, transformed Bereaved Survivor. So this has a, um, a general transform ability where it, it gets real sad when another creature you control dies, and it transforms into a Dauntless Avenger. A 3-2 human soldier with whenever Dauntless Avenger attacks, return target creature card with mana value 2 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped and attacking. So this is pretty powerful. Um, every time you attack with the Avenger, it brings creatures back from the graveyard, lower power creatures, but still, it's pretty, pretty powerful. Um, <clears throat> the next dual face white card is Brutal Cathar which we went over last week. Uh, Brutal Cathar is two and a white for a 2-2 two -two human soldier werewolf. Um, most of the werewolf cards are day bound and night bound. Um, when this creature enters the battlefield um, or transforms into Brutal... When this creature enters the battlefield or transforms into Brutal Cathar, exile target creature and opponent controls until this creature leaves the battlefield. So every time it enters or every time it flips back over to um, this side of the card, the daybound side of the card, 
You get to exile a creature card until this card leaves the battlefield. It has Daybound, which means um, if a player casts no spells during their own turn, it becomes Night the next turn. And when it becomes Night, Brutal Cathar transforms into Moonrage Brute, a 3-3 werewolf creature with First Strike and Ward. Um, and then it has Nightbound. If a player casts at least two spells during their turn, it becomes Day. And then it flips back over to Brutal Cathar. Uh, the next white dual side card is Champlain of Alms. For one white, you get a 1-1 one, one Human Cleric with First Strike and Ward 1. And it has a Disturb cost of 3 and a white. So when it dies, you pay its Disturb cost to transform it into the Shapel Shield Geist. So a Spirit Cleric 2-1 with First Strike and Flying. Each creature you control has Ward 1. So this is more... Um, it's taking the cha Chaplain of Arms, Alms, Ward 1, and putting it on all of your creatures instead of just itself. Um, if Chapel, Chapel Shieldgeist would be put into the graveyard from anywhere, exile it instead. Um, the next dual-sided white card is Enduring Angel. This is that extremely powerful one. Uh, it's two white, white, white for a 3-3 three, three creature, angel creature, with flying and double strike. And you, the player, has hexproof, so you can't be the target of any spells. Um, if your life total would be reduced to zero or less, instead transform Enduring Angel and your life total becomes three. Then, if Enduring Angel didn't transform this way, you lose the game. So... If you don't have Enduring Angel or Enduring Angel is already flipped over and is already transformed, um, when you reach zero life, you lose the game as normal. But if you have Enduring Angel out on the board and your life would to go to zero, you transform it into Angelic Enforcer, you gain three life. Um, Angelic Enforcer is a blank blank angel creature with flying and hexproof. Oh no, you have hexproof. Um, Angelic Enforcers' e power and toughness are equal to the li your life total. So it becomes 3-3 three, three when you immediately transform it because you get 3 life uh, when it transforms. Um, and then whenever Angelic Enforcer attacks, double your life total. So you go from, if you attack with it immediately, you go from 3 life to 6 life. So she becomes a 6-6 six, six before you deal damage. So it, you're attacking with 6 damage. And then next turn, you attack again, it, you get 12 life, it goes to 12-12, um, and so on and so forth. It becomes way out of control extremely fast. Then we have the Lunark Veteran for one white. It's a 1-1 one, one human cleric with whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, gain a life. That's pretty standard for... Uh, Low power white creatures, white clerics. It has a disturb cost of one and a white. You cast this again from your graveyard uh, for its disturb cost, and it transforms into Luminous Phantom, a 1 1 spirit cleric with whenever another creature enters, leaves the battlefield. Uh, whenever another creature you control leaves the battlefield, you gain one life. And if Luminous Phantom would be put into a graveyard from anywhere, exile it instead. Almost all cards with Disturb costs will be exiled the second time they pass, or the second time they die, so keep that in mind. So, its, it's day side has whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, gain a life, and its night side has whenever a creature leaves the battlefield, uh, gain a life. That's pretty fun. Uh, the next one is Morning Patrol. Morning is in sadness. It's two and a white for a 2-3 human soldier with vigilance. When it dies and goes to your graveyard, you can cast it again for its disturbed cost of three and a white, and it transforms into morning apparition. Morning as in sunrise. Um, it is a 2-1 spirit soldier with flying and vigilance. If morning apparition would be put into a graveyard from anywhere, exile it instead. Um... So it's nothing super special, it's just a 2-3 a that turns into a 
It can become a 2-1. Um, both sides have vigilance. The spirit soldier side, the knight side has flying as well. Um, so it's just a neat card that you can play twice, much like the bait hook angler, our first dual sided blue card. For one and a blue, you get a 2-1 human peasant. Uh, when it dies, you can cast it again from your graveyard for its disturbed cost of one and a blue, and it transforms into the Haunt Hooked Drifter. Um, it's just a one and a two flying spirit creature token or card. Um, if Haunt Hooked Drifter would be put into a graveyard, exile it. Uh, the next blue double face card is Covetous Castaway, one and a blue for a one three human creature. With whenever Covetous Castaway dies, mill three cards. And then you can pay its Disturb cost, three, a blue, and a blue, to cast it again and transform it into a Ghostly Castigator, which is a 3-4 flying spirit creature. <clears throat> Whenever a Ghostly Castigator enters the battlefield, you may shuffle up to three target cards from your graveyard into your library. If Ghostly Castigator would die, put exile it instead. <clears throat> Uh, the next one is Delver of Secrets, which is a long-time fan favorite in Magic the Gathering. It's basically the, um, the scientist from the fly. Delver of Secrets costs one blue mana, and it's a 1-1. One, one. At the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top card of your library. You may reveal that card. If an instant or sorcery card is revealed, transform Delver of Secrets. And you transform him into the Insectile Aberration which is a 3-2 flying human insect. So you basically, um, at the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top card of your library. Um, if it's an instant or sorcery, you can transform it, and it becomes Insect Aberration, uh, which is a more powerful card. <clears throat> and then you've got this neat Hippogriff, Gale Drifter, for three and a blue. It's a 3-2 Hippogriff creature with flying. And then when it dies, you can cast it again for its disturbed cost of four and a blue, and it becomes the Whale Drifter, which is a fucking terrifying looking uh, hippogriff spirit. Um, and then when that dies, it goes into exile. Um, it has flying, also. The next blue dual sided card is Malevolent Hermit. For one and a blue, you get a 2 1 human wizard. You can pay a blue to sacrifice Malevolent Hermit to counter target creature spell unless its controller pays three. When it's dead, you can cast it for its cast it again from your graveyard for its disturbed cost of two and a blue, and it becomes the Benevolent Geist, which is a two two spirit wizard with flying. Non tr non creature spells you control can't be countered. If Benevolent Geist were to die, put it, exile it instead of put it in the graveyard. The next blue dual face card is Mysterious Tome for two and a blue. It's an artifact. Um, you pay two and tap it to draw a card and transform Mysterious Tome. You transform it into a Chilling Chronicle, an artifact. Tap, pay one to tap it to... Um, Tap target non-land permanent and transform Chilling Chronicle back to Mysterious Tome. And then you draw a card and transform it again and tap a uh, non-land permanent and transform it again. Pretty interesting artifact. I like it a lot. The next blue dual face card is Overwhelmed Archivist. For two and a blue, you pay... Th for two and a blue, you get a 3-2 human wizard creature. When Overwhelmed Archivist enters the battlefield, draw a card, then discard a card. Uh, when the Archivist dies, you can cast it again from your graveyard for its disturbed cost of three and a blue, and it becomes the Archive Haunt. So the ghost from the beginning of the Ghostbusters, that's just trying to read library books because it, life's too short and you can't read all the books you want to read. This basically becomes that. Um, he's a 2-1 Spirit Wizard with flying. Whenever Archivist Haunt attacks, draw a card, then discard a card. And if it were to die, exile it instead. <clears throat> um, the next blue dual face card is the Poppet Stitcher, which is a card we talked extensively about last weekend. Um, very powerful blue card. It's two and a blue for a 2-3 human wizard. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, 
create a 2-2 zombie creature with decay. Um, at the beginning of your upkeep, if you control three or more tokens, you transform Poppet Stitcher into the Poppet Factory. Um, you may transform. Um, you don't have to. You can continuously... You can keep Poppet Stitcher out for as long as you want, and he will continuously make zombie creature tokens every time you cast a spell. And then when you flip him over to turn this into an artifact, the Poppet Factory, all of the tokens you control are 3-3 three, three and have no other abilities. So there's no decay. Um, so every, every token you control becomes more powerful and won't die when you attack with them. A win-win. Um, and then at the beginning of your upkeep, you, you may transform the factory back to the Stitcher um, and vice versa. So this one is really neat because you have a lot more control over which side of the card you're using. Um, and yeah, it's mythic for a reason. It's very powerful, uh, especially because there's so many blue cards and black cards that allow you to create tokens. And then the Poppet Factory makes all of your tokens more powerful. Um, the next blue double face card is Suspicious Stowaway. For one and a blue, you get a 1-1 one, one Human Rogue Werewolf. This is going in my rogue deck for sure. Uh, it's a sp Suspicious Stowaway can't be blocked. Uh, whenever Suspicious Stowaway deals combat damage to a player, draw a card, then discard a card. So that's pretty standard rogue bullshit. Um, it also has Daybound. So if a player casts no spells during their own turn, it becomes night next turn. When it becomes night and the board state flips, it becomes a seafaring werewolf. A green 2-1 werewolf creature. So I can't play it in my um, rogue, my Demir deck. Uh, seafaring werewolf can't be blocked, again. Whenever seafaring werewolf da deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. So same thing as the other side. Um, and then it has Nightbound, so it changes back into the Suspicious Stowaway. Um, so this is a Simic card that gives you card draw. Can't be blocked, so it's always going to give you card draw if you attack with it and nothing kills it. Um, and it just flips back and forth. So you're either doing two damage if it's nighttime or one damage if it's daytime. Uh, the next card is the Bane Blade Scoundrel. So we're in black uh, dual face cards now. <clears throat> the Bane Blade Scoundrel is three and a black for a 4 3 human rogue warf werewolf. So this is a, a more powerful rogue. Whenever Bane Blade Scoundrel becomes blocked, each creature blocking it gets minus one, minus one till end of turn. And it has day bound. So if a player casts no spells during their turn, it becomes night the next turn. And when it becomes night, it transforms into the Bane Claw Marauder. It's a 5 4 werewolf. Whenever Bane Claw Marauder becomes blocked, each creature blocking it gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. Uh, whenever a creature blocking Bane Claw Marauder dies, that creature's controller loses a life. Well, that's pretty awesome. This is a very powerful rogue werewolf card. Definitely going in my rogue deck. Definitely should go in your werewolf deck if you're playing black. Um, yeah, pretty great. Um, the next black dual face card is Covert Cut Purse. For two and a black, you get a 2-1 human rogue. Another rogue. Yes. Um, whenever Covert Cut Purse enters the battlefield, destroy a target creature you don't control that was dealt damage this turn. And then when Covert Cut Purse dies, you can cast it again from your graveyard for its disturbed cost of four and a black, and it transforms into Covetous Geist. Um, a 2-2 Spirit Rogue with flying and death touch. If Covetous Geist would be put into a graveyard from anywhere, exile it instead. So that's a very powerful card. Um, very much putting that in my rogue deck, my death touch deck, everything in between. It is fantastic. The next one is Cult Curse of Leeches, which is a card we went over again extensively last week. For two and a black, you can curse Enchanted Player. Um, as this permanent transforms into Curse of Leeches, attach it to a player. 
The beginning of Enchanted Player's upkeep, they lose one life and you gain one life. And it has day bound. So, um, during the day, it is attached to a player. And then during the night, that it becomes a 4 4 leech horror with lifelink. And then it has night bound. But when it becomes day, it flips back over to Curse of Leeches. And it stays on your side of the battlefield, so at nighttime it's it's a powerful creature, and during the day it's a powerful curse. Um, the next black dual face card is Ecstatic Awakener. For one black, you get a 1-1 one, one human wizard. Its ability is two and a black to sacrifice another creature, draw a card, and transform Ecstatic Awakener. Activate only once each turn. When you transform Ecstatic Awakener, it becomes the Awoken Demon, a 4-4 demon creature. Um, and you can't transform it back because there's no, no ability text on this card. Um, so it just becomes a 4-4 demon for the rest of the game or while it's on the battlefield. So cards like this, you can't, you have to cast it from your hand on this side. You can't cast it on the night side. The next one is Graveyard Trespasser. For two and a black, you get a 3-3 human werewolf with ward discard a card. So it can't be the target of spells as long as you're willing to discard a card when someone targets it. Um, whenever Graveyard Trespasser enters the battlefield or attacks, exile up to one target card from a graveyard. If a creature card was exiled this way, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. And it has day bound, so if a player... Uh, cast no spells during their turn. It becomes night next turn. When it becomes night, Graveyard uh, Trespasser turns into the Graveyard Glutton, a 4-4 werewolf creature with the same ward um, and the same ability. So it just becomes one, one tougher at night. Uh, the next black dual side card is Heirloom Mirror. One and a black for an artifact. You pay one mana and tap it to pay a life, discard a card, draw a card, mill a card, then put a ritual counter on Heirloom Mirror. When Heirloom Mirror has three or more ritual counters on it, remove them and transform it, and you can only activate that as a sorcery. When it transforms, it becomes an inherited fiend, a 4-4 demon with flying you can pay two and a black to exile target creature card from a graveyard and put a 1-1 one, one counter on Inherited Fiend. So much like the Ooze from Ikoria, you can exile target cards from graveyards and make this buffer. Um, oh yeah, Let's, it's fucking, it's pretty sick. I like this. Um, this next card is actually something I thought Angel Bait would love as soon as I saw it because I got teased on Twitter this week. Jaren the Corrupted Bishop. For two and a black, you get a 2-3 human cleric legendary creature. So this is good for commanders or otherwise um, legendary status boards. Whenever Jaren Corrupted Bishop enters the battlefield or another non-token human you control dies, you lose one life and create a 1-1 one, one white human creature token. You can pay two to target human you control gains lifelink until end of turn. And at the beginning of your end step, if you have exactly 13 life, you can pay four and two black to transform Jaren. And when you transform Jaren, he becomes... Ormondal the Corruptor, a 6-6 demon legendary creature with flying, trample, and lifelink. You can sacrifice another creature to draw a card. Well, this fucking just turns into a crazy demon. It's interesting because you can't transform him back. There's no, there's no putting the demon back in the jar. Um... Uh, and it's just, it's really creepy. The art for the alternative version of this is almost too terrifying to even play. Um, the Eternal Midnight art styles that they've done for some of these cards is just bonkers. So Jaren Corrupted Bishop, very cool. 
Um, very black. It's a very black card. Um, you have to have exactly 13 life to be able to transform them. Um, you create humans and use humans as life linkers. It's pretty, pretty great. And then he turns into this crazy demon, the Corruptor. Uh, the next card is Shady Traveler for two and a black. You get a 2-3 human werewolf with menace and daybound. So when it becomes night, Shady Traveler transforms into the Stalking Predator. 4-4 four, four, werewolf with menace and nightbound. So he just flips back and forth uh, from a 2-3 on one side to a 4-4 four, four on the other. Uh, the next black dual face card is Vengeful Strangler. For one and a black, you get a 2-1 human rogue. Vengeful Strangler can't be blocked because he's fucking tied up, maybe. <clears throat> um, when Vengeful Strangler dies, return it to the battlefield transformed under your control. Attached to target creature or planeswalker an opponent controls. Okay, so when it dies, you transform it and it becomes a strangling grasp, enchantment, or... Oh my god, that's so cool. Enchant creature or planeswalker an opponent controls. At the beginning of your upkeep, enchanted permanent controller sacrifices a non... Oh my god. Sacrifices a non-land permanent and loses a card. Or loses a life. I have to put this in my rogue deck. That's so good. Uh, okay, so now we're on to red dual face cards. The first one is Fang Blade Brigand. Three and a red for a 3 4 human werewolf. You can pay one and a red. Fair, fair, Fang Blade Brigand gets plus one, plus zero, and gains first strike until end of turn. It has day bound, but when it becomes night, Fang Blade, Blade Brigand transforms into Fang Blade Eviscerator, a 4 5 werewolf. And its abilities are pay one and a red to get a plus one, plus zero, and first strike. Or you pay four and a red, and all creatures you control get plus two, plus zero till end of turn. Pretty good. The next one is Flame Channeler. Channelers are a big deal in red decks. This one is one and a red for a 2-2 human wizard. When, when a spell you control deals damage, transform Flame Channeler and... The transform side is Embodiment of Flame, a 3-3 three, three elemental wizard with whenever you a spell you control deals damage, put a flame counter on Embodiment of Flame. You may pay one mana to remove a flame counter from Embodiment of Flame and exile the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn. Crazy. <clears throat> but I have some emergency healing if you pop that homie in the deck. Well, I think that's why we're talking about the Corruptor, right? I mean, you you can pay him money to give, make humans have lifelink. So if you do it right, 13 HP boy, if you do it right, um, well, I guess it's till end of turn, and then on your end step, you have to transform. Yeah, I mean, if you're playing standard, you only have 20 life, so 13 life isn't much. And then this guy gets lifelink, so... Lifelink is whenever it deals damage, you gain that much life. So, this guy, the, his, the Corruptor side has lifelink, so every time he attacks, you get 6 life. As long as he does damage to something. Well, you get yourself down to 13. Pardon me. You get yourself down to 13 health, transform them, and then you get yourself back up really fast. Uh, where were we? Harvest Tide Infiltrator. Two in a red, you get a 3 2 human werewolf with trample and day bound. But when it becomes night, Harvest Tide Infiltrator becomes the Harvest Tide Assailant. A 4 4 werewolf with trample. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of, like, just standard straight-up 
uh, werewolf transformations in the red Innistrad decks. Um, so the next red dual-sided card is Reckless Stormseeker. For two and a red, you get a 2-3 Human Werewolf. They reprint Moon Mist. I don't think so. <clears throat> um, at the beginning of combat on your turn, target creature you control gains plus one, plus zero, and haste until end of turn. It's daybound, so when it becomes night... Reckless Stormseeker turns into Storm Charge Slasher, so a fucking lightning werewolf. At the beginning of combat on your turn, target creature you control gets plus two, plus zero, and gains trample and haste until end of turn. Yeah, there's lots of lots of good werewolves in this set. I mean lots of good transforming cards, just period. Uh, the next one is Smoldering Egg for one and a red. You get a 0-4 Dragon Egg with Defender, so it can block. Uh, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, put a number of Ember Counters on a Smoldering Egg equal to the amount of mana spent to cast that spell. Then, if Smoldering Egg has seven or more Ember Counters on it, remove them and transform it. Smoldering Egg becomes a Ash Mouth Dragon. You never go ash to mouth um, unless you're playing red. Um, you get a 4 4 ash mouth dragon with flying. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, ash mouth dragon deals 2 damage to any target. So, pretty typical red dragon. Um, that's pretty good. And you need to spend at least seven mana casting instants or sorceries in order to transform the egg into the dragon. Pretty dope dragon. The next one is Spell Rune Painter. For two and a red, you get a 2-3 human shaman werewolf creature. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, uh, spell, spell Rune Painter gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. It has day bound, so when it becomes night, Spell Rune Painter becomes Spell Rune Howla. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, Howler gets plus two, plus two until end of turn, and it's a three, four werewolf creature. Uh, and it's night bound, so it will transform back into Spell Rune Painter uh, when it becomes day again, and vice versa. Um, then you get Tavern Ruffian. So two for three and a red, you get two five human warrior werewolf, and it's just straight up two five, and it's day bound. And when it becomes night, it turns into the tavern smasher, and becomes a six five. So it's just a beefy, beefy transformation. Um, and then this is another card we went over last week. It's village watch, uh, four and a red for a four three human werewolf with haste. And day bound, so when it becomes night, the village watch becomes the village reavers. The 5 4 werewolf creature with werewolves and werewolves you control have haste. So when it becomes night, all of the wolves and werewolves you control have haste, and you can do a lot of damage. Um, the green dual face cards start with Bird Admirer. For two and a green, you get a 1-4 human archer werewolf uh, with reach. And it's day bound, so when it becomes night, the bird admirer becomes a wing shredder. Oh my god, that's not admiring. Um, it's a 3-5 werewolf creature with reach that can attack and rip to shred all the birds that you admire. And it's night bound, so it will flip back over when it becomes day again. Uh, the next green dual face card is Burly Breaker. Three, a green green for a 6 5 human werewolf. This is an extremely powerful human side of the werewolf card. And it has Ward 1. 
Uh, it is expensive, five mana for a six five. And then it has day bound, so when it becomes night, Burly Breaker transforms into Dire Strain Demolisher, which is intense. It's an eight seven with Ward three. And it's night bound, so it will switch back over to Burly Breaker when it becomes day again. Either way, super powerful card, either doing six damage or eight damage. Uh, it's pretty great. The next one is Death Bonnet Sprout. For one green, you get a 1 1 fungus at the beginning of your upkeep, mill a card. Then, if there are three or more creature cards in your graveyard, transform Death Bonnet Sprout. When you transform Death Bonnet Sprout, it becomes a Death Bonnet Hulk, a big ass mushroom boy. I've played enough Dark Souls to know that mu big ass mushroom boys are scary. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you may exile a card from a graveyard, or at the beginning of your upkeep, you may exile a card from your graveyard. If a creature card was exiled this way, put a 1 1 counter on Death Bonnet Hulk. So, again, like the oozes of the last set and Ikoria, um, and the oozes uh, from earlier on this list, exile creatures from graveyards, and Death Bonnet Hulk becomes 1 1 more powerful. Uh, the next card is Hound Tamer. For two and a green, you get a 3-3 human werewolf creature with Trample. And it has an ability to pay three and a green to put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature. So it can buff other creatures. Um, it has Day Bound, so when it becomes Night, the Hound Tamer becomes the Untamed Pup. It's a 4-4 four, four werewolf with Trample. Other wolves and werewolves you control have Trample. And you can, again, pay three and a green to put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature. And it's nightbound, so it will flip back over to the day. The next green dual face card is Outland Liberator. For one and a green, you get a 2 2 human werewolf with uh, pay one to sacrifice the Liberator to destroy target artifact or enchantment. It's day bound, so when it switches over to night, Outland Liberator will become the Frenzied Trap Breaker which you can also sacrifice to destroy target enchantment or artifact. Um, however, whenever Frenzy Trap Breaker attacks, destroy target artifact or enchantment defending player controls. So you don't have to sacrifice it. You can just attack with it and destroy those artifacts and enchantments. Um, and it's nightbound, so it will flip back over to day. Uh, the next... Green dual side card is the Tireless Hauler, which I believe we went over last week as well. Um, it's a four for four and a green. You get a four or five human werewolf with vigilance. It's day bound, so when it becomes night, Tireless Hauler will transform into the Dire Strain Brawler. It's a six six werewolf creature with vigilance, and it is night bound, so it will switch back over to the Hauler uh, during the day, the Brawler at night. Um, just a standard big boy. Big swings with the green. Um, the last mono green dual face card is Tavoler's Huntmaster. Four green green for a 6-6 six, six human werewolf. Another beefy human side. Um, whenever Tavoler's Huntmaster enters the battlefield, create two green wolf tokens. And it's day bound, so at night it will flip over to become Tavaler's pack leader. 7-7 seven, seven werewolf. Whenever Tavaler's pack leader enters the battlefield or attacks, create two green green were or wolf creatures. You can pay two and a green and a green. Another target wolf or werewolf you control. Fights target creature you don't control. So you have forced brawls, a bunch of wolf tokens. Uh, which is pretty great. And that comes into handy when you look at our first multicolored dual face card, Arlen the Pax Hope. Arlen is another notorious planeswalker from the Innistrad realm. Uh, for two, a red and a green, you get a four loyalty planeswalker that has day bound. Her day side has plus one. Until your next turn, you may cast creature spells as though they had flash. And each creature you control enters the battlefield with an additional 1-1 counter on it. This is pretty fantastic. 
Um, for minus three loyalty, you create two green wolf tokens. At night, Arlen becomes Arlen the Mo Moon's Fury, which is a four loyalty planeswalker with knight bound. Plus two, you can add a red and a green mana. And then for zero, until the end of the turn, Arlen Mo Moon's Fury becomes a 5 5 werewolf creature with trample, indestructible, and haste. So. There's not very many Planeswalkers you can attack with. Um, this is one of them, assuming you're on the Nightbound side. <clears throat> the next dual-colored... Um, next multicolored dual-sided card is Denik the Pious Apprentice. For a white and a blue, he's a 2-3 human soldier, legendary creature. Lifelink. Cards in your graveyard can't be the targets of spells or abilities, so people can't exile your shit. Which is going to be the biggest... Um, it's going to be the biggest tool to use against people playing in Innistrad, is you want to exile people's shit from their graveyard. But if they have Denik, uh, you can't exile their shit. Um... Instead of being daybound or nightbound, this legendary creature has Disturb. You can play it again from your graveyard for its Disturb cost of two, a white, and a blue. And Dennis becomes... Denik. Dennis. Denik becomes Denik the Pious Apparition. A 3-2 spirit soldier with flying. And whenever one or more creature cards are put into graveyards from anywhere, investigate. So you get a clue token. And this, Denik the Menace, yeah. If Denik, Pious Apparition, would be put into a graveyard from anywhere, exile it instead. So, basically, you get clue tokens anytime one or more creature cards gets put into a graveyard once per turn. Um, and clue tokens are pay two to sacrifice and draw a card. So, he's a pretty good white-blue, always wants to draw cards and build their library play with their library so this is nothing crazy new but it's a nice little uh trick on its flip side and it's disturb to transform so you're not sitting around kind of waiting um for the day night cycle to flip you can uh, cast this from your graveyard for its disturb cost um devoted craft keeper is the next one graph keeper He's white and a blue for a 2-1 human peasant creature. When devoted Graph Keeper enters the battlefield, mill two cards. Whenever you cast a spell from your graveyard, tap target creature you don't control. So there's a lot of um, flashbacks or disturb cards where you're casting shit from your graveyard. And if you have devoted Graph Keeper out, then whenever you do use one of those cards, you can tap um, a creature on your opponent's side. Uh, Devoted Graph Keeper also has a Disturb cost, so you can play him again from your graveyard for one, a white, and a blue, and he becomes a Departed Soul Keeper. Uh, a 3-1 Spirit Creature with Flying, Departed Soul Keeper can block only creatures with Flying. Uh, and when he dies, exile him instead of putting him into your graveyard. The next one is Kessig Naturalist. Red and a green for a 2-2 human werewolf. Uh, whenever Kessig Naturalist attacks, add a red or green to your mana pool. Till end of turn, you don't lose this mana as steps and phases end. And he has daybound, so when he becomes knight, Kessig Naturalist transforms into Lord of the Alvinwald. He's got a fancy-ass collar. Uh, he's a 3-3 werewolf. Other wolves and werewolves you control get plus one, plus one. Uh, whenever Lord of the Ulven Ul Ulvenwald attacks, add red and green. Um, till end of turn, you don't lose this mana, steps and phases, blah, blah, blah. And he's nightbound, so he'll change back when it becomes day. Um, fancy collar werewolves. Gotta love them. The next one is a Demir color legendary creature, Ludwig Necrogenius. Imagine just being a Necrogenius. Oh, I'm not a genius. I'm just a Necrogenius. 
Uh, he's a blue and a black to cast, and he's a 2-3 human wizard. That's a pretty cheap... If you're playing... Uh... <clears throat> Sorry. If you're playing commander, he's a pretty cheap commander, blue and a black. Uh, whenever Ludwig... Lud Ludwig... Necrogenius enters the battlefield or attacks, mill a card. And because Innistrad has so much graveyard play, milling cards is pretty good. Uh, you can play X, pay X, blue, blue, black, black, to exile X creature cards from your graveyard and transform Ludwig. X can't be zero. Activate only as a sorcery. When Ludwig Necrogenius transforms, he becomes Olag Ludwig's hubris. So this is the um, the fly ode. What's that called? Yeah. The the Frankenstein Frankenstein ode. Olad Ludwig's hubris is a four four zombie creature. As the creature transforms into Olag Ludwig's hubris, it becomes a copy of a creature card exiled with it. Except its name is Olag Ludwig Hubris. It's 4-4 four, four, and it's legendary blue-black zombie. In addition to its other colors and types, put a number of 1-1 one, one counters on Olag equal to the number of creature cards exiled with it. So, it's basically um, Lazav. I don't know. Lazav. Demir Mastermind. So, Lazav becomes copies of creatures um, or can shapeshift. So Lazav can shapeshift into creatures as they get put into the graveyard, but they're still Lazav in addition to everything else. And Olag Ludwig's hubris is very much the same. It can become a copy of a creature exiled with it. And you can put a number of 1-1 counters on Olag equal to the number of creatures exiled with it so when you pay x blue blue black black to exile creature cards from your graveyard um you can exile 10 creature cards from your graveyard uh, which is going to cost you 10 14 mana um and then you change it into this guy and he becomes a 14 14 creature zombie whatever very powerful very scary the art is Fucking exciting. Really dope. The next one is Tavolar, Dire Overlord. One, a red and a green for a 3 3 human werewolf legendary creature. Tavol Tavolar, Tov Tavolar, whatever his name is. Um, he's a special card we went over uh, in detail last week. Wizards of the Coast um, made sure to point out that he's the only creature that transforms and keeps his like main weapon because it's so important to him. Uh, when a wolf or werewolf you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. There's not a ton of card draw. Um, blue black decks have always been tough for me, like to play or to play against. I got some pretty intense blue black decks. I like Demir. Play, sorry, yeah. I mean, I play a lot of Demir Rogues, lots of milling, lots of cheap little rogues that get buffed up and do sneaky damage. Um, so Tavolar is whenever a wolf or werewolf you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. There's not a ton of direct card draw in blue, in red, or green, so this is very good or a commander or just any legendary creature you want to have on your battlefield. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control three or more wolves and or werewolves, it becomes knight. Then transform any number of human werewolves you control. And Tavolar is daybound, so he flips over to Devol Tavolar the Midnight Scourge if it is nighttime. Whenever a wolf or werewolf deals combat damage to a player, draw a card again. Um, and then you can pay X, a red, and a green to target werewolf or wolf gets plus X plus zero and gains trample until end of turn. So basically, if you're going ham on the werewolves, play Tavolar as your commander because there's nothing better. Um, you get a lot of card draw. If your whole 
Blue mana too, hello. If you're playing a lot of werewolves and wolves, if you're going full tribal with it, Tavolar's your dude. This guy gives you like card draw whenever you do damage to a player. Um, and you get to control the day night cycle a little bit more. Uh, the next dual sided card is a colorless. It's a mystic skull for two mana, it's an artifact. You can pay one and tap it to add one mana of any color. Not bad. Or you can pay five and tap it to transform Mystic Skull, and Mystic Skull becomes a Mystic Monstrosity Artifact Creature Construct. Lands you control have tapped to add one mana of any color. Um, and then the last dual-sided card is one that got teased on the internet as well, and it was like really hilarious it's hostile hostile it's a mythic rare land and you tap it to add a colorless uh, you can pay one to tap it to sacrifice a creature put a soul counter on the hostile then if there are three or more soul counters on it remove those counters transform it and untap it activate only as a sorcery so you take three um soul counters and you transform hostile, haunt, hostile Hostile into the Creeping in a 3-7 horror construct artifact creature. Um, it's really fucking hilarious. Whenever Creeping in attacks, you may exile a creature card from your opponent from your graveyard. If you do, each opponent loses X life and you gain X life, where X is the number of creature cards exiled with Creeping in. And then you can pay for and creeping in phases out so you can protect them for a round. You can phase them out and then phase them back in. Um, you can attack with him because his trigger, his exile trigger, only happens on attack. It doesn't have to do damage. You can attack with him and then pay for to phase him out. Though he doesn't actually do any damage, but he won't die. <laughs> uh, it's pretty funny. I really like this card. I think it'll be fun to add to kind of horror decks. I think it might even be interesting to build a deck around. Who knows? It's a cool land card that becomes a horror creature, horror construct artifact creature. Very interesting. Um, anyway, that was all of the new cards. We have been live for five hours. We have gone over every single monocolor, dual color, multicolor, dual face, artifact. Um, since I just arrived, any thought on midnight? Well, I mean, I've just had like five hours of thoughts on midnight. <laughs> um... I'm excited. I like spoopy shit. I like fall flavors. I like werewolves and monsters. Um, I think I'm most excited for the blue stuff. I play a lot of Demir and a lot of Golgari decks. 